here 1v1 green tooth gorge blue side its text place a chaos sorcerer offensive and disruptive commander with a bunch of spells starts off in melee combat this is black legion and up against the red side is Asmon plays an Eldar Warlock, great mobility and disruption, can leap into melee combat passively and starts with fleet. Captain Power, Tex going for some Chaos Space Marines, a ranged unit with heavy infantry armor with these bolters, quite good in melee combat though, will not want to fight these Howling Banshees, agile melee unit with power melee weapons, will slice up that heavy armor quick time if they get in amongst them. Warlock can support Banshees with challenging runes and also a bit more indirectly with Swift Movement, his global, which obviously works very well with Banshees, making them even more quick. Real glass cannon, these ladies. Very, very dangerous on retreat if you can position them well. A single cap early on for Asmon, took his natural on the west side a bit quicker. Tex taking his natural on the east side of Heretics and goes double kill space marines, not what I was expecting against Eldar. Asmon will most likely respond with shurikens, maybe even double shurikens, maybe double rangers. Howling Banshee's capping up. Dire Avengers will get some DPS on his heretics. Not sure why they are worshipping here. That might have been a misclick. Now they go after them, and there is the Doom Blast to suppress them and damage them. Though it does sacrifice a model, and they are chased off by the Banshees. The full heretics do not want to fight Howling Banshees. They are a soft melee counter in a default state become a much harder melee counter with their aspiring champion what's going on mid the warlock getting his passive leap knocking down a kill space marine does miss the special attack though he can also kind of support banshees by setting up assaults with his leap knockback banshees caught in retreat his kill space marines will smack them as they run by will probably get a model yes maybe two nope they get one model banshees get away with three and here's the second kill space marine squad and some more heretics on the way so double heretics double kill space marines which can work well now has a Guardian weapon team to deal with, armed with a Shuriken Cannon. These guys will suppress infantry with that big Shuriken Cannon once it sets up. Tex can counter with Raptors or perhaps just vestments of the Warp on his Chaos Sorcerer or maybe even a bunch of Grenade Launchers, we will see. I imagine he's going to at least keep one of his Heretics in their melee state to deal with the Banshees and down goes the Warlock on retreat, got caught in melee by two Chaos Space Marine squads is not what you want. When we see the Merciless Witchblade to try and deny that Chaos Sorcerer some energy, he is a very energy intensive commander. Shuriken does not get Doom Blast, there it is, a bit too late with that. It is sometimes difficult since you cannot predict which model of your heretics will Doom Blast, so it might not be one close enough to suppress your target. Double Shuriken is for Asmon. Tex is going to need to, oh he does have Vestments of the Warp up, allows your Chaos Sorcerer to teleport around, greatly increasing his mobility and general annoyingness, often paired with Sword of Flame to teleport in and get some good DPS on, 496, 428, Asmon repurchases his commander, you cannot wait for a revive obviously in 1v1, using Fleet to get out of his base quickly, look at the foot speed he has with that east side being decapped by a Shuriken, Amongst setup teams, these guys are pretty maneuverable, which is why double shurikens is quite a popular build. You can manoeuvre and support each other quite well compared to the other setup teams in a way. Because Space Marines have flanked here, remember, you don't always need a hard setup counter to counter setup teams. You can just rely on flanks on most maps and in most situations on those maps. Kill Sorcerer are going after this other squad as one needs to retreat them. 477421, he might lose these guys, no he does get them away I think. Howling Banshees meanwhile chasing down Kill Space Marines, they do have Aspect of Strength. Gives them a health buff, a 30% one as well. Warshout which is a tier 1 ability and in tier 2 if they get their Exarch she will get an Executioner Spear. Heavy melee DPS as you see there, damages all targets so would help Asmon deal with an early Blood Crusher if that is the case. We do have some aspiring champion heretics for Tex. Gives them a Chaos Marine leader as you see there. And he's pretty nasty in melee combat. Increases the entire squad's health as well. And he will always be the last to die. Also makes them a detector. Bolt pistol and chainsword for him. Back control relatively even. Both the naturals though taken by Asmon. He might get a quick triple. Howling Banshees are capping mid. And they will do it in time just for a few seconds of triple heretics. 
decapping east side. Looks like we might see both players going in for tier 2 with what they have. Which could be painful for Tex. Heretics now in amongst those Howling Banshees. And as you can see, they're much more dangerous for them to fight with their Aspiring Champion. Even with the Immolator going up right on the Heretics there. They still won that engagement and still in this engagement, in fact, going after the Shuriken and making it back away. Dire Avengers also taking a lot of losses. Where is that Warlock? There he is. Lost the Indicator for him, but he does have the Immolator as you saw there. And there's his default Destructor ability, which can be incredibly nasty to Heretics without an Aspiring Champion. Sorcerer getting suppressed and teleports out. Warlock in retreat. And Tex will take his natural back and take the mid back for a 2-1. 3-7-2-4-2-1 two, two, Asmon with a double right now and has a pretty decent VP lead. And can go tier 2 relatively soon. We see a web breaker all the way up here going up. This is a global ability for Eldar. Quite a controversial one as well. Just gives an already very mobile faction. Insane mobility potentially. If the other player doesn't track them down, they are infiltrated, so you need a detector to see them. In the next update, they are set to get a couple of nerfs. They will take 10 seconds longer to build, and they will give triple experience compared to what they do now. 351, 421, triple experience to destroy, that is. Chaos is also coming to the west side to cap Asmon's natural. Might get a quick double, but I doubt it, because Asmon is right over here. Triple gens up, and it looks like this is a concerted push to take down some gems or at least harass them. Keep Tex pegged back with sort of destruct on his heretics. And tier two for Asmon. Tex can go also. Howling Banshees are decent. Power bashers with those power melee attacks going in. We haven't seen an immolator go off. Warlock just about getting away there. Meanwhile, Dire Avengers are capping and he's cascading the firing arcs of these shurikens so that they cover each other or rather the back one covers the front one. Here's some Zinch worship infiltrating the surrounding infantry also works on vehicles. Gives them that 20% range damage reduction even if they are spotted. Does not infiltrate the squad that is worshipping though. You can remedy that by having two heretic squads worship which will infiltrate each other. Shuriken shutting down Tex right now. Where's the sorcerer at? He's busy decapping. Howling Banshee is thinking about making a push to down to four models. He's in tier two. No sign of anything queued up or anything. 3513772 cap for Tex. Dire Avengers getting close. That was another destructor on his heretics. This squad turns around and Doom Blast the Banshees, but didn't seem to attack them there. Could have, could have got a couple of models, I think. Warlock's going to go down, get too close to those Heretics. And Aspiring Champion Heretics can be dangerous for a low-level melee commander. If it's not a Chaos Lord or something, or Hive Tyrant with Rendered Talons, they can be in trouble. So the Warlock goes down for the second time right outside Texas base, pretty much. 351, 356. What is he going to go for in tier 2? Maybe a Falcon. Having said that, Texas now gone for some plague marines asmon going for a wraith lord a walker vehicle always nice to see he's still here with his shurikens need to not lose attention of these guys both reasonably low on health around halfway three five one three four eight it's a one to one cap plague marines are they going to be enough to deal with the wraith lord i don't think they are assuming he can tie it up with the wraith lord West side, Howling Banshees are decapping and now trying to cap here are the Plague Marines. Very tough infantry squad with a missile launch which snares targets, do damage over time with the bolters and have insane health regen as well as 2000 hit points. At level 1, 329, 348. so using his mobility mostly to cap. I'm not sure if he's realized there's a web breaker over here somewhere best way to use webway gates is out of the way like that where someone if you appear suddenly over here they won't necessarily know it was from a webway gate here is that Wraith Lord Walker vehicle for Eldar really powerful in melee combat as you'd expect from a Walker vehicle but unique in that it can get a ranged weapon and not lose a melee effectiveness it still keeps 
its splash damage if it gets a shoulder mounted range weapon and can also get a self heal in tier 3 for my money the best walker vehicle fall in I think it's also reasonably fast walking around I'm not sure if that's just its animation seems faster or if it is in fact faster than dreadnoughts 297348 Tell Saucer in retreat it's a one to one cap and I think I think Tex is going to need something else to deal with this Maybe a Havoc Squad could purchase one right now. Is not doing so. So if he's, a, he's either confident in his Plague Marines ability or he's going double Plague Marines or something else even. He's going double Markov's each kill Space Marines in fact. No he's not. He's getting Markov Corn and Markov's each. Get it right Indrid. Mid has turned red. It's 293348. So not often you see one of each mark but can be incredibly powerful. Markov Corn gives them Chain Axes which are power melee weapons and Plasma Pistols. The aspiring champion gets a melter pistol. Marcus Inch gives them these inferno bolters. Really good damage to all infantry types. Plague Marines forcing off some direct as they see the damage over time stink coming off them. And heretics teleporting out. Was that a global teleport or does he have yes it was using the global teleport to get his heretics out of trouble there? Sorcerer can select an allied unit or one of his units rather and teleport them back to the sorcerer to get them out of harm's way usually. You can use it offensively though. Down goes that shuriken. This is a big engagement. Heretics moving in on the Chaos Space Marines with Mark of Zinch. The heretics and the Mark of Corn Cries are right there though. This is dangerous. Exarch is up for the Banshees so they do have that Executioner Spear. And that's a good engagement for Asmod. Did not think the Banshees were going to do so well there. Warthog. Dropped onto nothing there. What happened? I'm not sure. 272348. Wraith Lord has the shoulder mounted shuriken cannon. This does, I think, is around 40 DPS. It's crazy. Really can just switch him to range stance and really contribute to engagements. 272348 heretics are decapping. Might see a destructor on their face. There it is. And look at the damage. Crazy, almost wiping them. Autark in retreat path. Sub commander for Eldar. Very, very quick on her feet. Can leap over cover, in fact, as well. Also has fleet, as if she wasn't fast enough already. Can also leap to disrupt and also buff surrounding allies. She also passively buffs surrounding allies as well. Going for uh, Executioner Spear, which is not a heavy melee weapon like the Howling Banshee's spear is. It's a 64 DPS, I think. Power melee weapon yet, which is pretty tasty. She's caught by heretics here though. She needs a couple of specials, and I don't think she's going to get them because heretics have high melee skill, being a melee counter, of course. Autark jumps away, slightly healing herself, and the cap stuff. What's going on here? Mark of Corn kills space screens of capping too. They're not happy with it because the victory point is not bleeding. Howling Banshee is coming in. To be an interesting fight. I think Banshees win it most of the time. Depends on specials they have to watch out there. Which does help in melee fights because it stops your enemies moving around within the fight to get attacks in. But with some Marcos in support and Dire Avenger support, both squads forced off. I think the Banshees had that fight though. Great Lord now chasing down and these guys just about getting away. Blood Crusher is up for Tex. He might use the Plague Marines and the Blood Crusher to try and take down the Wraith Lord. Blood Crusher does good DPS. Almost 100 heavy melee. Doesn't have splash though and is nowhere near as tough as a true walker vehicle. Wraith Lord with 1200 hit points. Blood Crusher with half that. Is a demon though which is vital so he can benefit greatly from worship. Plague Marines trying to force melee on this shuriken getting suppressed. And now need to be incredibly careful. Knocked down. Both models knocked down by two passive leaps there. Caught by the Banshee. They do explode on death. Which might have saved them there. And there's Demon Armor on retreat as well. From the Chaos Sorcerer. He's now switched back to Vestments of the Warp. 247348. That's the Demonic Shield which Demon Armor gives you. Oh, Blood Crush is hitting power, is he? Here comes the Wraith Lord, 247, 348 even, and it's another Wraith Lord for Asmod. Lost his Dire Avengers at some point, maybe the Plague Marines were responsible. 
while I was whittling away about the Wraith Lord over here. Blood Crusher now under Zinch Worship, which is great for a Blood Crusher. Gives it the infiltration, obviously. Gives it a 20% range damage reduction and normal worship benefits for a demon, which is health and energy regen as heretics are whacked out. And as you can see there, just the Howling Banshee Exarch putting pressure on this Blood Crusher enough for it to be pulled back to 43, 48. Hasn't quite used his Chaos Sorcerer enough in combat, I don't think. Lots of great capping going on. Not enough killing, maybe Sword of Flame to put pressure on those shurikens earlier because he was locked down quite a lot on that east side early on. He has vestments of the warp equipped. More Plague Marines on the way for Tex. Really going after this Wraith Lord now. Now he has two to deal with. And this one is getting a shoulder mounted Bright Lance. 40 power, but it is very powerful. I think in the next update it's going to get increased accuracy on the move, I think. I'm not sure. 218348. Two Ton Cap for Asmon. Has some points in the half of his map. D Cap though. And Tex has a big army. He's lost stuff, but he still has a big army. Asmon has also lost stuff, of course. Has lost a Shuriken and his Dar Avengers. Dar Avengers give you so much utility with shields and grenades. And that mobility they give you as well. 210, 348. Howling Banshees suppressing the Sorcerer, but he teleports away. Teleports into trouble. Does not want to fight a Wraith Lord. What is he up to? 210, 348 goes down. He was trying to retreat, apparently. Plague Marines down to two models, but not reinforced because they retain their missile launcher as long as one model is alive. Heretics, level two now, Blood Crusher still level one. Got a bunch of XP though. These Plague Marines still level one. Also, his Curse Space Marines level two and level two, both very, very nearly level three though. 205348. And this is the backbone of his army here. These two Curse Space Marine squads giving him something different each one. Doesn't want to lose them. Doesn't want to fight a couple of Wraith Lords, that's for sure. He needs to cap mid and he's going to try and do so. Distracting his Wraith Lords, I think. Looks like that web breaker that was here has gone down. 193, 348. Some warp spiders are for Asmon. Not something I see terribly often, I must be said. See lots of Wraith Lord and Falcon play into tier 3 for Eldar these days. Some Wraith Guard, not a lot of warp spiders. 187348. Double Plague Marines both getting a missile hit onto this Wraith Lord, snaring it and damaging it there. As you can see, there is some Zinx Worship. Here's the Blood Crusher. This is going to be an important engagement. Use Demonic Raw there to momentarily force off those Banshees. There's a Doom Box, the first one I can remember even seeing in this game. 187342, that's a starting ability of the Chaos Sorcerer Heretics. Have snapped out of worship and retreat. They should have gone after the Banshees there, I think. 187341 kill a sorcerer is going to go down as it retreats. There's a sink kill from the Wraith Lord impaled on his Wraith Sword and just tossed aside like it was nothing. Fake Marines need to retreat. I don't know why he retreated as heretics. Don't know if it was a mistake or what. Another Fake Marine goes down and they are not cheap to reinforce. Tex under pressure from his double Wraith Lord. Should he have gone for a Havoc squad or would it have just been? Shut down by Autark Leaps and the speed of Banshees if it had a Laz Cannon. 169341. Just Space Marines still level 2, and these guys are also still level 2. He needs to take his natural back, surely. Backing away from this Wraith which is quite low. Asmon does not have anything to repair it. Fire Avengers are the repair unit for Eldar. So if Tex can get these. Plague Marines on the field quickly. He's going for a Dreadnought now. This is a very, very heavy tier 2. Two fully upgraded CSM. Double Plague Marines, Blood Crush and Dreadnought. Don't get much more heavy in tier 2 than that. 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 1. Single. Sorry, double cap for Asmon. Pounding Bash is in a bit of trouble here. Blood Crush is there. Trying to finish off the Plague Marines. And there's the explosion in their face and wipes. The Howling Banshees, no, they get away, I thought they were definitely going to go down there. I thought he was going to snap his heretics out of worship and finish them off, but did not. Down goes the Wraith Lord though, yes! Nicely done, this Blood Crusher doing an amazing job, needs to back the hell away though. Look at the damage he's taking each swing from that Wraith Lord. He hasn't even leveled yet. He's moving it back in, under worship, trying to finish off this second Wraith Lord. Down goes the Blood Crusher, can the Plague Marines do it? They can! 
huge, huge engagement for both players. 93-41. I think Tex way coming out on top there though. Blood Crusher went down, but took down two Wraith Lords and bled those Banshees hard. Asmon now goes tier 3 on the back foot, I think. Here's a Blood Letter. Must have been spawned with the Circle of Summoning, or whatever it's called. Demonic Summoning, I'm not sure. It's a global that spawns blood letters and allows you to reinforce. That's what it does. Here's a Dreadnought, a Chaos Dreadnought to be exact. Begins with an auto cannon. Good damage to all targets. Small area of effect. And he's going for Mark of Horn. That's going to rip up some Banshees nastily. 67, 3, 4, 1. We'll give the Dreadnought 100 heavy melee DPS with a 40 heavy melee splash. But it can use Blood Rage, which ups its damage by, I think it's 40% now. Which is pretty nuts. 58, 3, 4, 1. 2 to 1 for Asmon. I was hoping we're going to see some Seer Council, but with this Dreadnought around, that's probably unlikely. The most obvious thing to do now would be to get double Fire Prisms, which is easier said than done, obviously. He needs the resources for that. There's a Haywire Grenade on that Dreadnought. It's all kicking off mid. Howling Banshee's just washouting those Kel Space Marines, running right past them, but taking damage here. Going to get caught in retreat by these Mark of Corn Kel Space Marine guys. Can the Xoc get away? I don't think she can. I think that's the end of them, and it is the end of them. That's a big loss for Asmon. All top drops, but misses everything. Still has the Executioner's Spear that she purchased last time before she was Sky Leaked back up. Tying up some Kel Space. She's doing a lot of damage here with that spear. She's level 2. She's kicking some ass. Almost finishes that squad. In fact, she might leap after them and try to do so with her melee charge and does. We saw that inspiration on kill there, those yellow circles around her when she made that kill. 54-3-4-1. Lots of support she gives. Warp Spiders down to a single model, running into trouble, need to get the hell out of there. There's their teleportation, and they do get out of there. 54-3-4-1. Asmon with just three units on the field, Warlock in amongst Mark of Corn Kill Space Marines with his Immolator, which does damage over time, but he's going to go down here. Third time, the so Warlock has gone down, and Asmon... It's, look, it's not looking good. Has a Dreadnought to deal with. Double Plague Marines to deal with. And level 4 Kel Space Marines. Dreadnought stomping around. Right outside Asmon's base, almost. And there's the first Fire Prism. 54, 3, 4, 1. It's a 1 to 1 cap. Ortark being annoying over on his east, east side up against Aspiring Champion Heretics. Inspiring no one of each kill because there's nobody around. 54. 339 forces them off, might be able to decap as well and killed a bunch of them. She's doing excellently well since she was dropped. But here comes a Mark of Corn Care Shadow. She does not want to fight this thing. 12 punch hit points at level 1, but won't be able to catch up. Look at her speed. Gets, look at her, that. It's like 5 seconds to get to mid on her feet. 54, 326. If that, what spiders do not have their Exarch. Here he is, though. 85-15, it's not cheap to get this guy on the field. 54-3-2-3. Both players tier 3. Tex can drop an Imperial Abyss nuke. And here is that Fire Prism. Awesome fire support for Eldar. Two types of shot. A spread shot, which you saw there. Knock down those Plague Marines. And a focus shot for large targets. Trying to keep those Plague Marines disrupted, though, so they can't shoot at it. Does not want to take rear armor hits. Only 500 hit points on this thing, and although it hovers around and looks nice and fancy, it's not zipping around the place. 54-3-0-4 is getting rear armor hits. There's a haywire though, and missile hits as well. He might lose his fire prism if those plague marines keep chasing. Plague marines still fight at the same rate when they are suppressed, which is a huge benefit for plague marines. Those guys retreat out. As you can see, Tex, I don't think he's ever reinforces Plague Marines. Warp Spiders do a lot of damage to Plague Marines though because they are not heavy infantry. They are actually regular infantry models in terms of their armor. Forcing melee on these Warp Spiders. Happy to lose them as he might be. Did a lot of damage but didn't take a mod off her guys. 54 to 64. Meanwhile the Chaos Dreadnoughts in base and that was an abyss on base that I missed which finished off the Fire Prism the Dreadnought did in itself. Taking down the Webway Gates made the Dreadnought very, very angry there. Now he's going after the base, 54-258. Is he going to be able to teleport this guy out? Still has tons of red. Walks while he's capping mid, 53-258. It's a single cap for Asmon. He might 
Might, might, might get a double here. Might get a triple here. There's the double. 46, 258. Lost tons of stuff, but has a huge VP lead and might be able to do this. Chaos Treadnought is bored of smacking on the base and is going to come and try and bash some Eldar to death. There is the global teleport getting the Chaos Treadnought right into the fight. There's an example of it being used quite aggressively. There's a Haywire Grenade snaring the Dreadnought and preventing it from firing its weapons which is just a waste mounted twin linked bolter for the Mark of Corn Dreadnought but down goes the Heretics I believe that was the aspiring champion going down passive leap from the Autark again look at the losses late game Walk Spiders forced off now and there it is a single cap wins it for Asmon so so close that fire prism did not last long did it Took a couple of rear armor hits from the Dreadnought, took a rear armor hit from the Plague Marines, and then perhaps, well here it is, the Husk. So I don't think the Abyss actually finished it off at all. Not sure, maybe a chain got it. Did chains hit vehicles? I don't know. But there it is. Single cap at the end of the game, Kill Saucer was trying to cap the east side. Let's have a look at him. He's level 2, and only had vestments of the warp. I'm sure I saw the Demonic Shield, but I'm not sure if I was imagining things. No, he must have had it. Warlock was level 6, had Immolator and Warp Throw at the end of the game, almost level 7. So there you go, I think the Autark did excellent. She got to level 4 at the end, look at this. Over a thousand hit points, and she's so fast as well. Mark of Corn Kill Space Marines level 4, over 2,000 hit points. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.